makapatuloy yung Migrante Internet. Mas maigi. So, ASEAN, the plates are soft. Magandang umaga po mga kaibigan. Tayo po nasa isang edisyon ng ating po namang tapatan sa aristokrat. Alam po ninyo, um, nawala kami ng dalawang linggo. Una ay nagkaroon ng problema sapagkat uh, minabuti ng management na medyo ipospone na muna yung focus on Metro Manila and the development and whatever happened since its inception. Sumunod po ay nagkaroon naman ng... Uh, roadblock dito sa Ross Boulevard dahil lang po naman sa ASEAN. So ngayon, pag-usapan natin kung ano ang naganap sa ASEAN. May pakinabang ba rito? Maayos ba ang uh, pagdaraos nito? O meron pa bang mga nararapat asahan? O tayo ba e eh, olat dito sapagkat malaki-laki rin ang gastos ng Pilipinas? If we are to uh, talk about investments and the goodwill established Okay ba yun? Yeah. So, yan ang pag-uusapan natin. We're joined by former Philippine Ambassador to Palawan in the Holy See, si Ambassador Lozada, Jose Apolinario Lozada. We're joined by Commodore Rex Robles, co-founder ng RAM. Uh, hindi pa naunawaan at naalala ni Casey Salamanca ng Ibon Foundation. Dahil ito eh, ano ito eh, uh, kung di ako nagkakamali eh, you're about 20? Oo, oh, hitam. Mantakin mo nga naman ano. Sino? <laughs> Kasama rin si Arman Hernando, tagapagsalita po naman ng migrante. So let's start, if we are to look at uh, ASEAN from an envoy's point of view. ano nakita niyo? I think we have to look at it in two ways. Uh, the physical preparation and the contents. If you look at the physical preparation, I think we have degraded excellent. We have even overdone it. Uh, that made the Philippines really uh, ensured us uh, anything that the Philippines will host will always be very, very good. And the content, though, uh, I should say, I don't think we passed it. Um, what are the consensus after that? They, start, they will start talking about the COC. The, but that has been an issue for the last 20 years, at least. Then the South China Sea is never mentioned. The Rohingya is never mentioned. They started talking about um, the um, North Korea, but everything was a North Korean issue was the U.S., um, what the U.S. want. So, I think it's just really a confirmation of the last meeting in August, which has not produced any um, profitable uh, result for the country. Mm -hmm. So if we're going to look at the hits and misses of ASEAN now, which I think is the issue we are facing at hand, I should really say that um, I think we have missed a lot, mm -hmm. especially on the South China Sea issue. Is it because of the Department of Foreign Affairs, uh, you know, mindset not to touch the issue of the South China Sea? No, I think it's because it's the policy of the um, sitting president not, not to, to touch, touch it. it. Okay. So everything really depends on the um, issues that would be approved by the sitting president. Okay. And um, it's unfortunate because we are the chairman. And when you're the chairman, you steer the discussions. Mm -hmm. And your priorities will really be the real priorities of the meeting. Mm -hmm. So it seems that the 50th uh, anniversary, the 31st ASEAN Summit, is really more on um, physical preparations rather than the content. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Commodore Rex Robles, how do you look at it very objectively? Well, um, I, I have to confess that since I'm retired, I, I'm not really following what is happening in ASEAN. I understand there was another meeting in Vietnam. Uh, is that ASEAN? Well, that's APEC. APEC. 
because in the APEC, I understand there are issues that have not been, like uh, Rohingya and uh, South China Sea, that were brought up actually there. Not brought up, but just mentioned. Uh, in so far as my uh, outsider view is concerned, the ASEAN is starting to come of age because um, judging from the many people who want to be uh, invited as a discussion, what are they called? Yung mga dialogue bita? partners. Dialogue partners. Uh, that means that that indicates the degree of importance being assigned to ASEAN. And if you compare it to what is happening to the European Union now, we seem to be looking better. And uh, there are follow-up uh, activities like uh, the one in India, where uh, India will talk to ASEAN, and the one between Philippines and, uh, and China. I think these are the meetings where the more fruitful results would be expected. Because when too many people are gathered, and I have seen this when I was in the UN, the tendency is just to be pleasant to each other. Mm -hmm. And in that respect, I would consider it a success. Everybody was pleasant, mm -hmm. except for a few examples, like people who were invited, like the Canadians, the Canadian president, decided to talk about an issue that he was not really entitled to talk about. Only the United Nations is entitled to talk at any time about issues like that. Mm -hmm. And why he decided to do that is his own problem. Although I understand that he is a solid leader in his own right, and he is a, he's a real person. What about the preparations? Would you say it, it was excellent? Look, uh, it's, uh, thank you for asking. I'll give you one name, June Pinor. Mm -hmm. June Pinor is one of the most underestimated or under, we do not acknowledge his work, mm -hmm. but this guy is at the center of about 50,000 people operating all over the place, security, reception, uh, pagkain, lahat. And he was able to swing it. Of course, he had uh, lots of experience, but just the same. This guy is so averse to publicity that nobody even, even mentions his name. Now I'm mentioning it, June Painor. He's the guy. When uh, Ambassador uh, Lozada here talks about the success of the physical preparations, then I have to mention him. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, in fairness to the police, uh, wala ko na balitang naging biktima ng atiban gang ngayon dito sa dinaos na Asia. No? So walang na atiban. Uh, wala sumakay sa padyak. Unlike some uh, meetings ago, meron na dengue na sumakay sa padyak at naatiban. Anyway, that's beside the point. Coming from Ebon Foundation, how do you look at it? Uh, were you able to follow through the agreements and the documents signed? Um, kung sa amin po yan sa Ebon, um, actually, yung ASEAN, maganda rin tingnan natin siya historically. 50 years, uh, significant yon for the chairmanship ng Philippines, uh, 50th anniversary niya. Pero for the fa past 50 years, ang naging performance ng Philippines from 1967 to 2016, sev uh, seven times uh, ang inimprove ng kanyang GDP. Ang foreign direct investments, more than 300 times ang inimprove niyan for, uh, I think, 1971 kasi walang uh, uh, data available uh, further than that. Pero titingnan mo rin concretely Ang manufacturing natin from the same period ng 50 years, from 1967 to 2016, bumaba siya eh, from 26 to 24 instead of improving and developing. At yun yung malungkot kasi yung production mo, uh, production aspect ng iyong economy, yun yung mag-create ng jobs, yun yung mag-create ng uh, trabaho. No? At in connection dun sa, actually yung napirmahan na, a uh, migrant uh, consensus on the rights of the migrant workers malilesen sana eh yung numbers ng Filipinos going abroad if we have more jobs dito locally domestically kaya lang uh, historically nakikita natin bumababa yung areas uh, important to create more jobs for our uh, fellow Filipino 
So would you say, Casey, na umuunlad ang ASEAN at yung dialogue partners na iiwan ng Pilipinas? Um, actually, hindi ko po sasabihin na umuunlad ang ASEAN. Um, yung, pwede siguro yung kanyang mga dialogue partners, salimbawa, uh, ang China talagang uh, booming ang kanyang pag-integrate uh, ngayon eh, sa labas sa kanyang uh, bansa. Pero ASEAN na sa whole, mula nung kanyang uh, openness, no, yung open ASEAN, yung kanyang pagpaproyekto ng integration globally, hindi naman din talaga nagdulot ng improvement significantly dun sa mga bansang miyembro nito, lalo dun sa mga least developed countries na tinatawag at sa mga backward economies gaya ng Pilipinas. For example, uh, nananatili yung, yung race to the bottom na tinatawag. Ang Vietnam ngayon, uh, siya ang third sa Asia na highest ang in-improve ng kanyang foreign direct investments. However, ito ay napunta sa manufacturing, electronics, no, na ang, ang primary namang benta ng Vietnam o bentahin niya, ang baba talaga ng pasweldo sa Vietnam. Okay. So, race to the bottom. Yes. Okay. Uh, how do you look at it, uh, Ambassador? I think because we, ASEAN, for the last 50 years, have just really been talking and talking and talking there's no clear uh, implementation of what they want to uh, each of the country to really um, accomplish. Now, on part of the issues that they have decided, for example, um, the Migrant Workers Act has been there for the last several years. I remember I was still active in the Foreign Service. I was one of those who campaigned around in, in Europe for um, partners to to so, so sign it in the UN. Uh, now, only now that the ASEAN are able to do that, but still, we need the dialogue partners to ratify the Migrant Workers, the UN Migrant Workers Act. That is not ratified by the UN partners. That's why we still have a very poor performance with regards to um, treatment of our OFWs. Okay. When you start talking about um, manufacturing uh, issues, wala eh. Ano lang? Polo uh, proposals lang. Mm -hmm. We have never gotten out of the, um, the how would you call that? The box. Mm -hmm. We are still there. We keep on talking and talking and talking, but you don't see uh, on the ground okay. what has been decided. Manufacturing, labor, whatever issues that we have are all old issues that uh, we keep on reviving every time there is an ASEAN meeting. Right. ASEAN should really be more aggressive, especially since the EU is not really performing the way it should. But ASEAN should really now uh, start becoming more aggressive, not only because of its uh, strategic importance to security, uh, issues, mm -hmm. but because ASEAN is 660 million people. Which is a good market. So the, the biggest market, if you add China, the, that, that becomes Southeast Asia is really number one. But ASEAN is 660 million people. It's a very good market. Okay. And I hope that they should really all strive to be having the same the okay. degree of uh, improvement in their economic performances. Okay. They say uh, they'd like to credit ASEAN for no armed conflicts within the 10 member countries. Do you see this as an important factor that kung merong hindi pagkakasundo, pag-uusapan ito? Because there is this consensus building, centrality, and everything. Well, historically, we really didn't have any strong differences with our neighbors except probably Malaysia, which uh, is now uh, reduced into a minimum. What is keeping ASEAN together now is the threat of uh, extremism. And uh, there is, uh, for instance, a planned agreement between Malaysia, Indonesia, and the Philippines regarding uh, regarding um, security of the region. Yes. So that, those are examples of what they can do. And these are things that can be done 
and there are very little, there is very little ob uh, obstacles to it when compared to, for, for instance, the problem of production, which we seem to ignore. Mm -hmm. We just p produce people and export them, but we don't uh, produce goods, which is a key. For instance, in Singapore, they produce a lot. So, uh, and we have been warned about two or three years ago that because of the defeat of the ISIS in the Middle East, they are looking, they are moving out, or the ones who are going home are told to continue the struggle at home, and we we uh, we were told uh, uh, three years, two years ago, that the Philippines is the most porous border that mm -hmm. they can take advantage of. So we have to look into that. Really, oh, that's nice. But what has Migrante got to say about ASEAN? You know, kasama natin si Armand, who is a fourth-year College of Law student, soon to be a lawyer. Huh? Oh, pan panlaban to. Pwede gawing spokesman to. Sana nga po. At tama-tama panahon ng bar exams ngayon. Eh. Dito, oh, yeah, may yeah. excite din yeah. naman ako. Ano. Yeah, so Pero kami po sa Migrante International, actually po, yung 58 ASEAN na naging napaka-importante sa amin. Kasi dito in-announce noong Abril pa lamang na finally magkakaroon na ng kaisahan yung mga ASEAN member countries sa usapin ng protection sa migrants. No? Uh, since 2007 po, merong Cebu Declaration na ginawa yung ASEAN na magkakaroon sila no, ng uh, komite kung saan ipapunch nila o isosolidify nila kung ano yung mga karapatan ng mga migrant workers doon sa rehiyon para naman gumanda yung kabuhayan daw ng ating mga, ano, no, ng mga mamamayan ng ASEAN. At uh, inaabangan po namin nito at sa mahabang panahon eh, talaga nag engage po kami para marinig yung boses ng mga migrante rito. Pero sa ito, no, nung ASEAN Summit, di, natuwa din kami na idineklara ni Pangulong Duterte na sa, sa ASEAN Summit, ang magiging centerpiece ng aming summit ay yung ASEAN Consensus. No? Pero paglabas, nagulat po kami no? dahil uh, naging... Uh, po na alam, na, na water down no yung yung instrumento at nakita namin na paano namin to ya assert pala no bu, bu, uh, pagkatapos ng pagmamalaki nito kung ito pala ay non-binding at uh, limited sa protection sa mga documented migrant workers at yung pangatlo po ay wala siyang klarong programa kung paano talaga titignan yung migrasyon at kung paano ito unti-unting babawasan patungo doon sa pagkakaroon ng mga self-reliant uh, economy at uh, pagkakaroon ng trabaho sa sariling bansa ng ASEAN. Okay. So, Arman, ang sinasabi mo, eh, maganda na sana, kaya lang nasintunado, ganun? Uh, actually po, ganun talaga yung nangyari, no? Uh, <coughs> sabi nga namin, eh, Sa loob ng 10 years, may deklarasyon. Pagkatapos pala ng another 10 years, eh ganun din pala yung laman. No? Consensus at deklarasyon, wala siyang pinagkaiba. Napalamanan lang, no? at pagka pirma dito at klaro, sin sinabi po ng ASEAN na ito po ay non-binding document. Kaya iniisip namin, paano ito sa, ano, sa ground? Paano ito ay may assert ng isang migrante kapag nasa workplace siya? Kailangan bang ang mga ganitong kasunduan ay non-binding? Bakit kailangan non-binding? It's because the economic performance of ASEAN member countries are not the same. So while Philippines, Vietnam, Indonesia, and um, Thailand send uh, workers abroad or exchange workers, Singapore is not. Because Singapore is um, a Group A country. It's a developed country. So if Singapore, if you force Singapore to have this, to, to observe this um, uh, kasunduan, mawawala. Maliit lang Singapore. Eh. This, Singapore has the right to protect its own people. So, it has become non-binding. So, wala, walang, walang nangyari. Oh. Even the UN Convention, that's the main reason why our dialogue partners, U.S., mga progressive countries do not want to ratify it dahil sa economic performance. Pong protection ng dinila yung kanilang bansa, ang kanilang tao. Ah, okay. So, dinikado rin pala ito dahil sa maganda na nga yung no, idea of the water down There's pa. really nothing. You only have kasunduan na walang, basa, walang gamit. You know? All right. It's, it's just like having a window in your house that you will not open anyway. Or if you open, nobody will notice. Oh, okay. Ano impact nito sa ekonomiya? Um, I think 
tingin po namin sa Ibon yung consensus na to on migrant workers. Parang ano lang siya eh, uh, isang grand event sa isang event. Kumbaga parang pastar lang ba? Kasi non-binding siya. Uh, actually, halimbawa yung pinakamalaking bilang ng Filipinos kung sa ASEAN yan ay nasa Malaysia. Around 790,000 Filipinos. Kung ASEAN yan, Malaysia talaga yung pinupuntahan ng mga kababayan natin. However, Malaysia meron siyang record din eh, ng pag-violate din talaga sa rights ng migrant workers. At itong Malaysia, kahit na pumirma siya dito sa consensus na ito, ay hindi siya pumipirma sa ILO Convention ng Migrant Workers. Hindi rin siya pumirma dun sa UN Convention on Migrant Workers. So, isa lang siyang uh, grand event. No? Kung gusto talaga or serious ang mga ASEAN countries, ASEAN states na protektahan yung rights ng mga migrante, pwede namang gawin na lang nila. No need for a grand event na sabihing pinipirmahan namin to, okay kami dito. Pero at the end of the day, wala yung wait para sa isang manggagawang Pilipino abroad. Okay, so parang sa wedding reception, yung pagbubukas lang ng champagne. Ganun lang. Pero it won't hold anything, no? Okay. Now, let's look at this. Uh, gano'ng katagal bago magkaroon ng mga kasunduan na ika nga pagkakaisahan? How, how long will it take? Matagal. Matagal. So, yun, yung, yung kasunduan ng asayan, Uh, Vice Consul pa lang ako sa Foreign Service. That's about, what, how many years ago? 30, 40 years ago? Uh. So, bago magkaroon ng bilateral meetings, kunwari... So, they can meet every year, oh, having yeah. a bilateral discussion on that. Uh -huh. The problem is, at the end of the day, they always agree to disagree. Uh, so, that's the problem. So, yeah. so, the best thing for them is to sit with that ASEAN 50 will have an agreement which you can best describe as an agreement not to agree. Yung chairman's statement, gaano katagal ito pinaplan siya? Dahil yung chairman's statement... Now, it's supposed to come out 24 hours after. It took three days for DFA to release the chairman's statement. Well, I think we should ask DFA you know, why. I invited DFA, by the way, uh, but they failed to show up because of conflict in their schedule. Because we really wanted to ask them, what, what took you so long, baby? Three days is three days. They have a spokesman. They have a spokesperson. We invited them. Uh, maybe like you. Armand speaking for Migrante and... Uh, for Ibo, that's for the Ibon. case. Yeah, they could have sent uh, one of the assistant secretaries. You know, I, I was really wondering, uh, because we included in our letter that in the event that the good secretary would not be able to join, please send the spokesman. But there was no guidance from OSEC for the spokesman to appear today. So what does it mean? Probably they are not interested in the discussions. This could have been an opportune time for them to tell us. Yung mga dapat malaman ng publiko. But anyway, you're also familiar with agreements no, between countries. You served with the Department of National Defense. Gaano katagal ito pinag-uusapan ng mga bansa? Well, the ones I'm really familiar of are security agreements like Mutual Defense Treaty, mga ganun. Mga um, treaty with uh, Libya before. And uh, usually these are, these have a process. Mas mabalis ito at saka na-implement. Na like for instance, there's an exchange, uh, in initial exchange between countries. They come up with a general statement. The presidents will, both presidents of countries will come up with uh, more specific statements. And the groups will come up with issues And the issues will be boiled down to the ones that can be discussed. And the meetings are set maybe a year or two after that. And uh, the meetings are last about a month or two. And uh, you can see results. It depends on who, the skill of the, of the ones who are uh, there, uh, what they can get. Yeah. But Ambassador, you will agree with me that in uh, diplomacy they say uh, you think twice before you say nothing or you give one to take ten. Yeah, uh, I think we should understand that the last meeting of ASEAN, I, I think we over-emphasize um, something to come out of it. But the last meeting was only going to confirm what the foreign ministers have discussed in this August. So wala talaga. Wala. Kung ano yung nangyari noong Augusto, ayun yung 
Okay, ko confirm nila ngayon. And there was nothing in um, in the August meeting of the foreign minister. I remember when I was interviewed in one of the channels here, I expressed my disgust over uh, the issues that we should have brought up, which was never brought up in those meetings. Because I know that the December meeting, uh, when the summit, the presidents and prime ministers only meet to confirm what their foreign ministers agreed in the last meeting. Mm -hmm. Now, when you start talking about the dialogue partners to come, they're supposed to come and discuss the results of that August uh, meeting to find out issues that would be mutually beneficial to them. But uh, since the August has not produced any um, resolution on the important issues that affect ASEAN, there was nothing that to discuss about. So that's why if some people say it was a grand celebration. Mm -hmm. I, I, I should agree. And I'm, I'm very happy that it happened because so, it has put the Philippines and the, and the map of the world as the best place to uh, host uh, uh, any, anything, discussions. No? discussions. Yeah, okay. So just like the impeachment, uh, there is sufficient form but not substance. Parang ganun ba yun? <laughs> well, the substance will come when you are being tried in the Senate. No, no, no. What, what I mean is, I'm just correlating it because <laughs> maporma lang pero salaman wala. Yes. Well, I think for international agreements, we have to be prepared for that. Like, for instance, about uh, 1990, there was a Rio meeting, restructuring the international order. And look what happened after about 10, 15 years. It uh, petered out. It uh, trans tra transformed itself into this uh, uh, about global warming. And look at this, what is happening to global warming. Uh -huh. It's so slow. And every meeting is simply uh, just a minute uh, improvement over the other. So I think it's characteristic of, uh, of international agreements. And I attended a disarmament conference in 1979 in, uh, in uh, New York. Uh -huh. And that disarmament is supposed to disarm, uh, talk about this uh, atomic weapons to be disarmed. Uh -huh. But after that, the atomic weapons started to, no, well, started to grow again, and they were never controlled. So uh, I think it's part of the risk when many people talk that each country has its own interests. Okay, definitely. Sabi nga ni Trump, sulong mo yung interest ng bansa mo, susulong ko yung interest ng bansa ko. So how, how will that... Uh, that should really be the case. But what we have done was... That's really uh, an affair, um, but nothing to, to, to achieve. Wala naman tayong napag-usapan sa Amerika na o oh, ito yung, o oh, bigyan mo kami ng sampung submarines. O oh, oh, sa China, bigyan mo kami ng ganito. O oh, we can export all our bananas to you. Walang ganyan. Walang usapan ng ganyan eh. Mm -hmm. We have not increased our exports and imports from any other country. From Canada, we cannot even uh, close in the deal to return the garbage that they have sent to us. Pero kumain naman sa Jollibee. Ang tibali. Okay lang yun. I mean, ASEAN should really be serious. The, the countries there, or Philippines, should really be serious It's on its role in ASEAN uh, uh -huh. meetings. Okay. Because even if we cannot... Uh, we cannot um, improve our exports to the dialogue partners if we can improve our exports to fellow ASEAN countries. That's okay. That's more than enough to feed the 105 million Filipinos. But let me ask you, uh, Philippine Statistics Authority came out with uh, a report last Thursday saying that the Philippines is now second to Vietnam but ahead of China. Second to Vietnam? We're supposed to be number one. Before, yeah, yeah, precisely. Yeah, During no order. My God, it's uh, quite a pity that we should say that we are second only to Vietnam. Yeah, uh, we should really be. And uh, Vietnam was ravaged by war for decades. Yeah, we should really be on top. We should really be. <laughs> well, anyway, uh, you are not talking of uh, that beauty queen, no? Na ano? Ano sabi nila Miss Laos daw. But anyway, uh, anong impact ng sinabi ng China 
at ng Amerika. Na yung sa Amerika e eh, protectionist, tapos globalized economy naman na sinusulong ng China. Ano nakikita nyo ron? <laughs> Parang nagbaliktad, no? Nagbaliktad, no? <laughs> Pero uh, pag na natin, parang pareho lang din naman. May efforts to protect yung kanikanilang economies. Di, syempre, alam natin nung nanalo si, si Trump, yun naman po talaga yung line niya eh. Yung sinusulong niya. America first, uh, make America great again. So, ang gusto niya talaga ay protect yung economy nila. At meron pa siyang, actually, meron silang pagtingin na nabiktima din sila ng globalization, no, na hindi ito nag-work sa, sa bahagi ng Amerika. Pero, yung China, on the other hand, medyo hindi, hindi kita, hindi litaw. Pero may efforts din to protect their economy. Meron silang may in China 2025 na yung manufacturing base nila, bubuin talaga nila yan. Meron silang requirement sa mga uh, ipoproduce ng bansa nila kung ilang percent ang made in China dun sa mga uh, goods na magmumula sa China. Uh, alam naman natin, syempre isang ikinakagalit ng US sa China, yung technology transfer, talagang hindi makakapasok ang isang company sa China unless ibigay niya yung kanyang trade secrets, yung kanyang technology and how he does his trade. May ganong uh, may ganong policy ang, ang China. Eh. Ang malungkot dito, yung Pilipinas sa pakikipag-relate niya doon sa dalawang sabi nating superpowers na ito, na lulugi siya eh, at at the losing end. Parang we're opening up so much yung ating economies. Uh, while etong mga big uh, economies na ito ay nagpo-protect nung kanilang mga Uh, ekonomiya ng kanilang mamamayan. Si Trump nga, umaabot yan na nagpapalayas ng mga uh, migrants, di ba, sa, sa states. Kasi dapat lahat ng trabaho ay for Americans only. Pero yung Pilipinas, instead of following sana, protecting our economy, our industries, medyo nandun tayo sa side ng nagbubukas in favor ng mga foreign oh, okay. uh, companies. Sa dinamidami na nakita ko nakapila kanina doon sa US Embassy, eh, di <laughs> nag-aalala rin ako. Maraming magtutungo pa sa Estados Unidos. Pero merong statement na migrante tungkol doon sa nagaganap sa Myanmar. Anong dahilan at nagkaroon kayo ng statement doon? What has migrante got to do with it? Actually, may dugtong siya sa ASEAN. Eh. Uh... Yung UN no naglabas ng draft resolution dahil napakatindi na nung krisis sa Rohingya ngayon no umaabot na hang 600,000 ang nag ang nagiging refugee simula lang noong August no nag-escalate yung kaguluhan diyan 80,000 villages ang nasunog at napakaraming mga mamamayang Rohingya na yung namamatay no ah uh, itong si presidente Duterte no yung envoy niya doon sa UN ay nag-vote against sa UN resolution na maglalagay sana ng humanitarian aid iimbestigahan yung mga atrocities sa loob ng uh, Myanmar para daw mag-giveaway doon sa policy ng ASEAN sa non-intervention. No? Uh, kaya po nagtaka kami, bakit bigla-bigla, no? sa mahabang panahon, meron tayong isa sa pinakamalaking humanitarian crisis. At actually, pwede nating ituring na pagkatapos ng World War II, eh, G, ano, no? malakihang uh, ethnic cleansing, ay uh, ganito yung tindig ng ating uh, gobyerno. No? Na alarma po kami, Dahil po sa Pilipinas, eh hindi naman iba yung ganitong klaseng pangyayari dahil po sa Kamindanawan, alam po natin yung matinding militarization sa mga kababayan nating mga katutubong lumad, eh nangyayari din. At nangangamba po kami na ito ay ginagawa ni Pangulong Duterte para pagtakpan din yung mga kanya-kanya mga human rights record ng mga bansa okay. sa loob ng ASEAN. Okay. Uh, former Ambassador Lozada, ano ang policy ng katulad ni Ambassador Tedboy? Uh, Teddy Boy Luxin sa United Nations. Ang sabi niya, eh, mag-abstain ng Pilipinas. Well, his hands are tied. He has to ask permission from his foreign secretary. I, I don't think he is at liberty just to vote kung ano yung gusto niya. No. Dahil he should Teddy be invited by the Home Office. On behalf of the Philippine government. And that means to say that it is official instruction from Manila. Ah, okay. So, so officially structured sa Manila. I would like to believe that there is also an assessment from the Philippine Embassy in Myanmar. Uh, he, but that is an ASEAN, they, they say it's an ASEAN stand not to touch the issue in Myanmar, uh -huh. which is uh, against the UN uh, resolution. So how now, does that face the Philippines? Now, the Philippines uh, will have to choose whether to, to follow the UN or to follow ASEAN. But since in ASEAN, we're supposed to be one uh, common uh, policies now. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think 
Tede Boy made a um, correction. Hindi siya sinab niya, hindi siya nag -no. But his vote was he abstained. He, he abstained. Which is just another way of saying, ayoko. Oh. I remember when I was in the foreign service and I also served in the UN. In things like that, uh, normally, um, we don't, if we, we don't abstain at all, we don't also vote, we just walk out of the hall. Pero which is much better, just walking out of the hall? Yeah. There's no record. Ah, uh, Okay, katulad rin no, ilang mga congressmen na hindi bumoto do sa reproductive health bill, no? They just well, went out. Went out, yes. You, you just walk out. You're present, but you were not around during the voting, so, oh, so uh, there was nothing that call is... of nature. <laughs> uh, okay, okay. Uh, we'd like to open the floor to our colleagues from the media who may have questions this morning to our guests. You know, this is very interesting. Let's start with Pat Santos. Pat, simula muna. Uh, isa ka sa mga dual citizen dito. Ambassador. Ambassador, di ba, we are talking about ASEAN. Kanina na pag-usapan na historically, wala naman talagang conflict o ano yung mga neighboring Asian. Sir, may I, may I, ano, sir, may I remind you, every conflict sa Mindanao during during those early, early days, nagsimula yun sa Borneo yata, Sulu, uh, it was, there was a suspicion ng Malaysian, ginugulo yung ginugulo yung southern part ng Pilipinas para unstable so yung claim can be shrugged up uh, I'd like to make a correction there is really no conflict but there are certain misunderstandings um, between and among some ASEAN member countries which do not affect the unity of ASEAN now the Borneo Saba issue Opo. is an issue to, uh, between the Philippines and um Malaysia. Malaysia. And talks are ongoing for the resolution of that. I think we, uh, I don't know how many of you are aware, at latest review of the documents uh, reveal that um, the Philippine claim to Sabah is not the whole of Sabah. There is a, there is a defin defined area Territory. that was ceded by the Sultan of uh, Borneo Sultan, to the Sultan of Sulu. Now we are trying to retrace that uh, boundary when? Because I think if um, my memory serves right when I was given the briefing, is that Kota Kinabalo is outside of the area that we... Uh, the, the, the property of the Philippines. Philippines, yes. But then the most important thing here, why Malaysia will not uh, allow it? Because the area is about only one third of the whole of Sabah is being claimed by the Philippines. They cannot give it back to us because that is also the area where oil, timber, and uh, all the, the natural sources of Sabah is located. So we have, we, we have told the Malaysians we are not going to go to war with them. The Malaysians agreed that we are not also going to war with them, but we will talk about it. For how long we are going to talk, we will keep on talking. But that is what we call misunderstanding, but there is no disagreement. I don't know what it means, uh, but in... Pero underground, in, 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 underground. In diplomacy, <laughs> uh, we, we, say, uh, we say no in the nicest way, so... <laughs> oh, that's something. Oh, that's something. So how do you look at it? Military point of view, sir. Well, well if it's a matter of uh, causing problems uh, <clears throat> for the Philippines, the Malaysians have deliberately sponsored actions, uh, uh, rebel actions against the Philippines, and even now, they still maintain enclaves inside Sabah where, uh, where, um, those who escape from the Philippines or, or are hiding from the authorities can hide. They, they do that. And they, they give money, including to the president of the Philippines, to favor their side. So it's uh, they, they will do what they can to stop us from recovering the area while continue talking. But if you are talking about the kind of problems they raise, 
Wala namang Mindanao problem ko. Wala yung Malaysia. Tinraining nila yung mga unang batch ng mga rebelde, mga green shirts, mga mercenaries. Remember that? You know, they, they train those people to fight so that it will look like there is a problem in Mindanao when actually they just want to retain Zaba. Okay. Meron pa? Okay. Uh, may sinabi si Professor Clarita Carlos na mahirap yung code of conduct sa South China Sea. Mas makabubuti na kung fisheries agreement na lang tumbukin ng Pilipinas dahil less political. Yeah, I agree with uh, Claire on that. Because if we're going to do the code of conduct, it's a political uh, issue. And when you speak of political issues, there will be disagreement all the time because it's going to affect the security of each state. But if it is a fishery agreement, then both countries can agree that their people can fish in the areas of conflict. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's an economic agreement. Uh, it's closest to the stomach though kasi. Yeah, the closer you are to the stomach, the faster you can solve your problem. Wala naman mag-aaway kung pariyo silang busog lahat eh. So to satisfy it. Yeah. And then uh, probably yung joint exploration will come later. Yes. I, 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 in fact, I propose that um, we should really convert the area as a zone of uh, peace for everybody. Peace and neutrality. And neutrality. Do you yeah. think it can be achieved? The problem here is you are dealing with uh, David and Goliath issue. Even if the Chinese will say yes, and the Americans will say, yes, we have no control over the area because they have submarines and they have nuclear power. Even right now, we talk, we don't know how many submarines are, are there of the U.S. And that's what really kept the Chinese from uh, also um, becoming more aggressive there. Okay. Yeah. So why is it that even the armed forces of the Philippines, sabi nga, while we have renounced war as an instrument, no? Uh, uh, to solve problems, bakit naiwanan yung Pilipinas compared to our Asian neighbors? May frigate at merong mga aircraft carriers at submarines ng Indonesia. Whatever happened to the Philippines? You know, for a long time, uh, when I was still in the service, I saw the budget of the armed forces being reduced deliberately every year. Hey, that's, that's, that's has been a... Uh, a practice of previous presidents who did not seem to see the importance of having a robust defense because of the of the natural resources that we have. But going back to your main question, I, I, I myself see the agreement on fisheries is the best uh, possibility that we have. <clears throat> and the, in, the possibility or the prospects of a joint venture is there, is there, but we have to be prepared to give uh, a lot to China, let's say 60, 40, or 70, 30, because we are weak. Uh, there are people who are saying, there is a, dis a discussion, uh, there is a decision that we will win and we have to insist on that, we ask our neighbors. That's wishful thinking. The practical side is, this area does not belong to anybody. It does not belong to anybody. It belongs to the world. And the rule when it belongs to the world is, the stronger guy will prevail. That's the rule. And we have to follow the rule. Uh, I don't think we can go against that. Yeah. We cannot send Fernando Po Jr. and Lito Lapid, no? Or, uh, or, uh, sa ski, no? Okay. Yes, please. Yeah, good morning po. Juvie de Guzman po sa DWBL. Gusto kong tanong si Ms. Casey. Una-una, uh, congratulations po sa iyong batang edad. Uh, <laughs> you're so uh, so nice, no? To have your ano, your uh, obligation just like that. Natuwa ako sa kanya kasi ilan sa mga ganyang kasing kabataan ang dapat nating minamotivate, pinagmamalaki. Okay. Yeah. Question, please. Yes. <laughs> My question is... Sa assessment po, base po sa inyo bilang isang millennial, uh, ano po yung pinaka nagustuhan nyo doon sa nangyaring summit? Si 
siguro kung meron <laughs> meron ba <laughs> yung fact lang na nag-uusap kasi uh, totoo pa rin naman eh yung you cannot leave as an island. Apo. At important yon halimbawa sa isang bansa kagaya ng Pilipinas na makipag-relate dun sa mga kapitbahay niya at makahanap ng common grounds. Ayun uh, nga lang, syempre, sa pag-uusap na nangyari, ang, ang end of the day question ay ano ba ang napag-usapan? O kaya yan eh, na nag-uusap pero ano ang content? Ano ang nilaman? Sadly, yung ASEAN Summit, yung 31st ASEAN Summit ay hindi... wala masyadong change or beneficial sa kagaya ko, halimbawa, na ako, ako mo na mamamayan, ano eh, sa, uh, ma, hindi siya yung inaasahan natin na relation that will bring uh-huh. yung development na mapapauwi yung, kasi may mga kamag-anak din na mga OFWs, yung makakreate ng uh, stable jobs at development talaga doon sa Pilipinas. Yung tulungan. Okay. Yeah. Ah, follow-up question. Ah, isa na lang, Ma'am Casey. Yung po bang pinakaayaw nyo, yung po ba yun, na wala kayong nakitang uh, parang uh, move on dun sa pinag-usapan dati, parang walang ano, walang additional uh, effect dun sa mga research mo? Um, siguro po yung pinakaayaw natin ay yung nadedehado pa rin, yung Pilipinas dehado dun sa mga agreements na pinapasok ng ASEAN na sa block at yung bilateral na mga agreements na pinapasok ng ating gobyerno sa mga kapitbahay natin, sa mga karelate natin na iba pang bansa. Halimbawa, yung uh, under, uh, on the table ngayon na negosyasyon ng Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership, yung RCEP, with six dialogue partners ng ASEAN. Uh, we've been making a stand, we've been releasing researches nung pang uh, early this year, no, inaral na natin yan. Kung ano lang yung meron tayo, kasi alam naman natin yung free trade agreements, negotiations ay okay. very much secretive, tsaka behind closed doors ang negotiations. So, so kung anong meron tayo, mm. ang nakikita natin talaga, very favorable dun sa mga developed at advanced na, at dehado-dehado yung mga bansang kagaya ng Pilipinas. Okay po, bilang isang kabataan, ano po ba yung, kung sakaling makakausap po ninyo ang uh, Halimbawa, kanwari kayo po yung presidente. Ano po ba yung, ano po ba yung pwede niyong gusto niyong sabihin at anong bansa po ba yun para ho magkaroon ng katuparan naman yung inyong gustong mangyari sa mangyayaring ASEAN na to? Sorry po, hindi ko masyadong nakasabihin po. On. Hindi, kung sakali po na kayo po yung nasa posisyon ni P. Duterte, ano po ba yung unang-una ninyong sasabihin sa bansang makakadaupang palad po ninyo? At anong bansa po iyon? Siguro hindi magmamatter kung sinong bansa. Pero Opo. ako, I will just stand na kung mag-uusap tayo, mag-usap tayo ng uh, equal tayo. Uh, oo, mahina sigurong bansa pa yung Pilipinas sa ngayon. Pero nakikipag-usap ako sa'yo para tulungan mo ako na paunla rin yung mga kababayan ko at hindi i-take advantage yung weaknesses ko. Thank you so, po. Yun. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, please. Tess Ramir, Catholic Media Network. Um, we know that from media that the Philippines spent 15 billion pesos for the ASEAN 50 uh, anniversary. Considering cost-benefit analysis, palagay nyo ba yung 15 billion pesos na ginastos natin, eh ano yung benefit na nakuha from the standpoint of migrants, from the standpoint of research and development, from the standpoint of foreign policy, from the standpoint of government-to-government government, uh, Rex uh, relational progress. Ano ko yung cost-benefit na, na nakikita ninyo, if there are? Sige, ako na lang muna. Oh, sige. Uh, sa usapin po ng migrants, actually, wala kaming makita eh. Kahit na si, effect. Kahit isa, kasi kahit po, sa amin po, ah, ang, ang tinutungtungan kasi namin, yung na-forge eh, na uh, 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 uh. consensus eh. Kasi there were three pillars na pinag-usapan in preparation eh. Cultural, Mm-mm. socio-cultural, Mm-mm. political, tsaka economic. Tapos Mm-mm. sa inyo, wala. Oo. Kung sa ASEAN consensus kasi, ang, yun nga, ang, ang, at the end of the day, pag alis nila, ang iisipin namin, ano yung effect nun sa amin? Mm-mm. Ano yung effect dun sa mga kamag-anak namin nasa abroad pagka-pirma ng ASEAN consensus? Mm-hmm. Eh kung non-binding nga siya at hindi, at hindi affected yung iba pang mga sektor ng mga migrante eh, paano magbe-benefit sa amin kahit kaano man. Ang pinakamalinaw nga namin tanong, 
Si Mary Jean Veloso, detained mm. sa Indonesia hanggang mm. ngayon. May temporary reprieve lamang. Member ng ASEAN country ang Indonesia. May effect ba sa kanya yung ASEAN consensus dahil undocumented siya? Di nakikita namin, wala. No? Uh, mula dun sa nagastos, mula dun sa grandiosong event ng ASEAN 50, ano ang mangyari kay Mary Jean Veloso? Yung effect nun, wala po sa kanya yun. At wala po yung tahimik po si President Duterte, dumating si... Uh, President Guido Dorito, mm -hmm. pero wala po silang binanggit tungkol sa kalagayan po ng Mary Jane Veloso. At, you know. uh, on, the, on, the, on the organizational note, yung, meron bang nagkaroon man, man ba ng representante ang migrante through various agencies para mailabas yung issue niya? Wala. Actually po, doon po kami nagkakaproblema. No? Ah. Uh, frequently, nag, la, nagbibigay po kami nung stand namin na ano dapat ang lamanin ng isang uh, instrument. No? Uh, meron po kaming sinasalihan ng mga alternative uh, dialogues, Correct. conferences Correct. ng mga civil society organizations within yes. the ASEAN at uh. iba pang mga parte para po mapalakas yung aming tinig. Uh, pero kadalasan po kasi talagang merong mga negotiators yung gobyerno at kadalasan no, sila yung may huling salita. doon sa mga lalamanin. No? So, in other, words, mm -hmm. in other words, from the point of view of migrante, nangihinayang kayo sa 15 billion pesos? Uh, sa totoo lang po, uh, wala po kami talagang makita ano ba yung aasahan natin dito pagkatapos na ASEAN. Thank you. Sa, siguro po yung ASEAN Economic Community since its establishment noong 2015, ang na-maintain lang naman niya ay i-open tayo sa global value chain at ang part natin sa global value chain na yun ay bilang manufacturers ng mga intermediate goods uh, we import we export ang number one natin na import export ay intermediate goods raw materials nandyan din yung uh, exploitation syempre ng ating cheap labor alam naman natin yan at naka, nagpatindi doon yung openness nung ASEAN na ito kung sa totoo merong benefits sa ASEAN kasi Uh, nakakapag-relate tayo sa mga kapitbahay natin. Sabi ko nga, okay yun na nag-uusap tayo. Pero kung sa cost at benefit na idinulot sa atin, hindi ko naman sinasaping zero tayo sa usapin ng trade with our ASEAN neighbors, meron naman. Kaya lang, sadly, hindi ito naka, napunta doon sa mga vital uh, sectors ng ating economy na magdadrive sana ng growth significantly para magkaroon ng trabaho yung ating mga kababayan at magkaroon ng Tulad ng... Sana. Um, halimbawa, supporting yung ating local manufacturing. Okay. Uh, hindi yung paggawa lang ng pag-integrate sa global value chain at yung bahagi ng isang kotse ay yun lang yung gagawin natin. Fragmented. ba diba? Yung Factory Asia, yun naman ang idea niya. In imbis na magtayo ka ng salili mong industries, mahaging bahagi ka lang nung isang napakalaking uh, assembly line. So kung sa atin yan, hindi tayo zero eh. We have the raw materials, we have the scientists, the uh, knowledge, we have the people. No, kaya nating mag-move forward and sana yung ating government sa pakikipag-relate sa mga international communities kagaya ng ASEAN laging iput uh, sa primary yung paano magbe-benefit yung ating That, That's why kung, kung cost-benefit ang pag-uusapan from the 15 billion, ilan percentage sa akala nyo in the, representing that particular uh, thrust na in the, sinusulong ninyo mga ilan ang na-achieve? Sa kanya mm -hmm. sa migrante kasi zero eh Sa inyo? Opo. Si, uh, kung doon sa trust ng pro protecting yung iyong industries uh -huh. and um, pagsusulong ng genuine development, siguro yung 15 billion, sana ginastos na lang natin somewhere 15 else. Billion. Uh, 15 uh, billion. Yung, we're talking of cost-benefit eh. Mm -hmm. Kung nag-nagay tayo ng puhunan na 15 billion pesos for the uh, ASEAN Summit, ilang porsyento? 10%, 1% ang nakakuha mo nyo man lamang Dahil sa nangyaring ASEAN Summit. Yun ang punto ng tanong ko. Siguro kung sa amin po, zero, zero din eh. Ha? Yung, zero din? Yung, be, yung benefits natin okay. sa amin. Medyo mas, <laughs> Papa, marami, mas, <laughs> ano, mas marami talaga tayong ibinibigay. Okay, okay. Diba? O oh, sige. Si, si Ambassador naman. I'd like to hear you, Ambassador. I, I, I beg to disagree. Sige, 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 sige. Siguro sa trade. Hindi man first prize, consolation prize. No? At least <laughs> meron. Uh, I think that the preparation... The, the the pageantry and all of those things celebration really celebration made us uh, on top of the world so we that's hope, 100% for you yeah we okay. hope that um, uh, this year we will have we will see the fruits of that with so many 
people coming in to see our country. Mm -hmm. That is the only time we can really say whether we have benefited from the grandiose preparations yeah. or not. But if you start talking about the immediate effects now, medyo hindi nakikita yun dahil bago pa lang. What we are all talking are uh, our dispensations, our um, but um, the last ASEAN has not really um, given so much hope and expectations to our people. Mm. Uh, I think everybody is just really relating it with the traffic and uh, all of those <laughs> things rather than the... Kaya nga sabi ko eh, if we have to rate ASEAN, the last ASEAN, then we have to rate it in two ways. What is physical and what is content? Mm -hmm. So physical, medyo... Mataas. Mataas. So, so one, content, oh. 101%. Wow. Panalo. Oh. Sa content, medyo... Um, wala. Sinabi na ng lahat ng tao dito, uh, frustrations nila, and those frustrations are supported by facts. Okay. Uh, for you, ganun din? Yes. Content-wise, it content will be... Content-wise, siguro, mga 10, 20%. Okay. Wala, malayo. Okay. Okay. Politically, Com Commodore, uh, you well, can relate also militarily if you like. Well, I cannot look at it as a business venture that you need ROI. Oh, yeah, political. Because, for instance, when I was in the UN, I saw Carlos Romulo at the mm -hmm. time mm -hmm. stay in one of the more expensive uh, suites, costing more than $1,500. A day? Uh, a day. At the time, um, I thought it was, why should we pay so much? Mm -hmm. But then, one time, I saw him a light from a vehicle, and I saw all the South African countries holding umbrellas and uh, actually treating him like a, like a saint or a savior. And I was told, Romulo was one of those who, who first voted for these countries to be free. And to me, it dawned upon me that sometimes there are things that you cannot value in terms of actual money. Mm -hmm. See, Romulo is a treasure to us, so we spend a lot on him, but uh, there, there are returns. Mm -hmm. That is an extreme example. Mm -hmm. In the case of uh, ASEAN, uh, somebody said there, I mean, much of the money also went back to the Philippine economy because dito naman ginastos dito ginastos. yung rental ng mm -hmm. kotse, mga ganon, bayad sa mga security. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's how I see it. It's a very okay. Okay. general view. Thank you. Thank you. More questions from the media? Oh, well. The columnist par excellence. The heavyweight. The heavyweight. Maganda umaga po. Ah, uh, lingoy ng opinion. Yung pong ASEAN ay limampung taon na. Samantalang itong uh, summit ay 31st. Nung review ko yung history, yung pala, yung first two decades from 1967 up to 1987. In 1987, the Philippines hosted the ASEAN summit for the first time. Nung uh, December 87 nung Pangulo si Cory Aquino. Yung pala, in the two decades, there were only about four uh, summits. Samantalang this year, we not only had one summit, we had two summits last April and now in uh, November. Uh, would you know why, why in the beginning, walang annual summit, samantalang ngayon, twice a year na yung summit? The last two decades, there were no summits because there were close consultations among them. So one president goes to another country to discuss matters. But they, no? four times lang sila nakita-kita lahat kasi they were trying to improve on the charter at the time. Um, but when ASEAN started to grow, then there is a need for them to harmonize their programs, their policies, and their uh, um, political stand on certain issues that would affect the organization. Thank you. More questions? Can we look forward? What are we to expect? Uh, okay. ASEAN is 50 years old. And uh, ASEAN leaders met 31 times together in the last 50 years. 
it is, uh, I think, in the last 50 years, we should have really cemented what we would like to achieve in the next 50 years. So ASEAN, we were expecting uh, that the last ASEAN summit should have really made progress on the work program that we would like to achieve in the next 50 years. Lay down the foundation for the next 50 years program of actions for our countries and our people to follow. Because the last 50 years that we celebrated, the work program that we followed were done by the founding fathers. Um, and we improved in it. But I did not see any work program for ASEAN for the next 50 years. You mean to say next year will be the 51st year. And the most important year, it's supposed to really now tell us ito yung gagawin natin for the next 50 years. But there is no work program. They just really had the uh, wine and dine and nothing else. Okay. Yes. Militarily, politically. Well, um, militarily, there is a lot of improvement actually because, uh, because of the common enemy, which is the extremists, the ISIS. And uh, actual, uh, the fact is, our uh, intelligence exchanges have been uh, more vigorous now, more, more often. And uh, with the new leadership, the military now, uh, it does not hesitate to share the intelligence that they used to keep out, keep out or after they raise it to the president, if the president ignores it, they just stop. But now the new leadership can actually uh, insist a little bit and say, uh, your, Mr. President, we need to act on this. And that's, I think, a, a good sign. Um, in terms of uh, military benefits, we have all these uh, <laughs> donations from China, from Russia. The U.S. does not want to get, let, let uh, be behind, so they will give a, uh, a ship that is named after uh, Rodrigo Roa Duterte. Because, uh, so that's probably 72 years old? No, it's a new frigate. Ah, it's a new frigate. Actually, it's not really new. It's a newly refurbished frigate, as opposed to the really mga... hand me down Young LSTs, for instance. But when we reached Korea, the people, the Koreans said, why are you sailing these ships? The plates are so thin that they can... Uh, they get it any time. <laughs> The, uh, but we still uh, we still accepted them and spent a lot to rebuild them, but allowed the Americans to take the credit. That is no longer possible. Uh, that is no longer happening. And so we have this. So there are benefits, and we have actually waken up to the fact that when you have the defense versus butter, uh, arms versus butter debate, that butter is good, but you also need arms to maintain your butter. Mm -hmm. Very well. Mula sa migrante. Uh, sa amin naman, ang pagtanaw sa hinaharap, lagi dapat nating tignan ng positibo. No? Sa amin sa mga migrante, ang, ang tangit na lagi naman namin panawagan, no? ay uh, magtuloy-tuloy tayo sa pag-engage sa gobyerno, no? sa iba't ibang mga bansa, sa usapin ng pagsusulong ng ating mga karapatan. Maaring dito sa ASEAN 2017 ay hindi natin naabot Pero dapat ito yung magsilbing inspirasyon sa atin na ituloy, palakasin pa natin yung ating mga panawagan para once and for all marinig na nung gobyerno natin at nung gobyerno kung saan tayo nagtatrabaho yung ating mga karapatan at maobliga sila na irespeto tayo bilang mga tao. At uh, hanggat hindi nararating yun, no hanggat wala mga konkretong mga programa, polisiya, yung mga gobyerno, ay uh, magpapatuloy ang mga migrante, magpapatuloy yung Migrante International sa paghamon sa gobyerno at pakikiisa sa bawat mamamayan na once and for all magkaroon na ng mabuting kalagayan sa Pilipinas sa para sa ating lahat. Very good. Casey, uh, pahabol ko lang, no? Uh, binanggit ng Banko Sentral ng Pilipinas na bumaba ang remittances by 7% na nakalipas na Setyembre, partikular mula sa Saudi Arabia, Qatar, at pati Australia, no? Anong impact nito? Sabi rin kasi ng DFA, 
may higit sa 8,400 ang undocumented Filipinos ang umuwi sa ilalim ng amnesty program ng Saudi Arabia. Uh, ano nakikita mong impact nito sapagkat yung ating mga ating ekonomiya ay uh, consumer driven at umaasa rin sa remittances at BPOs? Um, tingin ko po, uh, kung meron tayong way para saluhin yung ating mga umuwing uh, mga kababayan, wala namang problema ang umuwi sila eh. Uh, kaya lang, alam, nung July lang, ano, in spite yung growth na sinasabi ng uh, Philippine Statistics Authority nitong third quarter, uh, we lost 700,000 jobs nung July. At hindi, hindi, alam, pag, yung pag-uwi ng ating mga kababayan, walang garantee na meron silang kabuhayan. More likely, siguro maghahanap ng ibang bansang pwedeng puntahan, pwedeng pag-applyan. Yung pagbaba ng remittance, sadly, yung ating economy nakarelay sa remittances ng ating mga kababayan abroad uh, instead of relying doon sa pagbubuo ng kanyang production base na nagde-develop talaga nung kanyang economy. At yung sa ASEAN po, kung nakita natin yung ASEAN Economic Community Blueprint ng 2025, medyo walang difference sa uh, ASEAN Economic Community Blueprint noong 2015, going the same track of uh, opening, liberalizing economies ng ASEAN country. Siguro kung uh, merong uh, leader, no, hindi lang sa Pilipinas, kung hindi sa iba pang mga ASEAN countries na namag-stand talaga uh, for countries No, third world nations, developing countries para maging developed. At isulong yon sa loob ng uh, uh, medyo lumalakas na, sinasabi natin lumalakas na komunidad, medyo mal pinapakinggan worldwide na community kagaya ng ASEAN. Kung maisusulong yung ganitong mga, may forward yung ganitong mga concerns ng mga uh, countries na hindi kasing develop no, at developing pa lamang, ni mas maigi at magiging beneficial para sa mga asyano yung komunidad na gaya ng ASEAN. All right. On that note, we'd like to say thank you to our colleagues from the media, to our guests who took time out to be with us sa ating post-mortem ng ASEAN. Uh, next week, we will talk about the Maguindanao massacre, impunity, at fake news. Yeah, Pag-uusapan natin yan next week. So please join us. And uh, we can only hope that ASEAN will be more relevant and uh, prove itself to be something else than an old boys club. By the way, there was a study made by ADB a couple of years ago that most people in ASEAN don't know. There is an association of Southeast Asian nations. Okay. Uh, by the way, uh, before we finally end, may we request everyone to please pray for the soul of Christine Herrera who passed away yesterday while in Bangkok. No? Uh, so, yun po ang pinakahuli natin. Uh, nagkaroon yata ng myocardial infarction or something, uh, samantalang naroon sa Bangkok. Maraming salamat po, magandang araw. Hanggang sa susunod na lunes, pagkatang umaga sa mga taga Pisa Mora Elementary School. Narito rin. <laughs>